All right, so we are talking calories, <laughs> and we are talking the chemistry behind them and the types of energy that they can provide. So before we jump into all of the energy and the things that we will dive into there, let's break down the chemistry of them, right? Yeah. So every single food that you eat is going to be made of chemistry. And when we look at it from a nutrition perspective, it's all nutrients. And there's different categories of nutrients. There are nutrients that give us energy, which are think calories, right? Which are carbs, fats, and proteins. And then there are nutrients that do not give us energy, but we still really need like water, vitamins, and minerals. Sure. And sometimes like you hear a lot of people now and like the big buzz around like macronutrients, <laughs> uh -huh. right? So is that something that is a good definition for other people to be thinking about? Does that cause confusion? No, macronutrients are literally, they are the thing that give us energy. That's what we call carbs, fats, and proteins. Okay, perfect. And so as we start to think about those different types of foods and like what your body um, or what you see, like a lot of times myself included, I'm thinking like, did I get enough of this today? Or did I get enough of that today? Um, or, well, I already ate one banana, so I shouldn't eat the second one. How do you start <laughs> to like, think about all of those different types of calories and right. like the bigger picture? Right. So I think, you know, there's a lot of things to unpack there. At, at the end of the day, our body doesn't see whether you had a banana or you had pasta as your source of carbohydrate. It literally just sees the chemistry inside. So like when you eat a banana, it's seeing carbohydrate, particularly from starch or from, mm -hmm. from sugar. Um, when you eat pasta, it's seeing carbohydrate from starch. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, our body is breaking that into the exact same thing of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. Gotcha. A lot of chemistry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good, and we'll shift away from the <laughs> yeah. chemistry a little bit because there's plenty more where that came from and we'll get into that uh -huh. different type of stuff. But I wanna talk about calorie counts mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. everybody seems to be counting some form of them yeah. um, and you know, looking for some specific number that they should live by. Yeah. Um, for growing students and athletes that are doing all of these different types of things, what should they be thinking about when they're looking or maybe not looking for that magic number. Yeah, calories are a really, really complex topic. Um, and so when you look at like calorie recommendations and what you see at a food level, they often throw at a number of 2000. Well, that's really just based upon what the average population needs. So it's like a bell curve, Yeah. right? So if you look at a bell curve, you have where at the top of the curve and that's where the most space is, that's where the average tends to lie. But there's a lot of space in the front of the curve and in the back of the curve. So there are people that need a lot more and there are people that need a lot less. And what's even more complicated is that can change every single day based upon your growth, uh, your physical activity, even your stress levels. So to try to put yourself and lock yourself into a calorie number can get you into a lot of trouble and lead you to overeat or undereat. Yeah, and so when we're thinking about all of that, because like I have often looked at it and said like, well, how much is this or mm -hmm. how much is that? Um, does once your body get into a certain groove in terms of like a number of calories, is that what it gets used to? Or it's like, oh, I'm having 2,500 calories every day, but today I only had 22 mm -hmm. or I had 28. Like how does it all start to kind of like balance out? Yeah, our bodies are super flexible. So for example, just because we eat, and that's, that's one of the dangers of counting calories, yeah. right? Is that you think that if I only need 2,000, if I eat 2,200, something bad's gonna happen. But the truth is your body is so flexible that if you eat a little bit more, it's gonna use it. It's gonna do something with it. Yeah. And similarly, if you eat a little bit less, it's just gonna adjust to it. Um, and so it can get really, really messy. And oftentimes our appetite and our hunger levels will fluctuate based upon sure. our calorie needs. Um, so I can see this with my toddler, right? Like when he's growing, he eats so much. Yeah. Um, but when he's not growing, he doesn't eat that much. And that mm -hmm. terrifies me, but he's actually listening to his body and what he needs. Sure, and so then that same principle starts to climb up into our older kids and, right. and folks that are starting to think about like, well, I wanna, gain muscle or I mm -hmm. want to start to perform and I feel like I'm, you know, like you mentioned, like mm -hmm. you'll look at a sophomore boy or, mm -hmm. you know, a, a freshman girl and I'm just picking random yeah. <laughs> ages, but not so random sometimes. And they'll just like shoot up mm -hmm. and all of a sudden like they do need more. They need more. Right. But if they don't give themselves more, they actually can really impede their ability to grow. Mm -hmm. So I have a lot of patients who decide that they're afraid to eat and they might stop restricting. So we'll watch their growth chart and they are, you know, they're average, they're doing well. They stop eating and they stop growing. 
that's not good. Yeah. <laughs> We're much better off listening to our bodies and our appetites than we are trying to restrict ourselves to a number. Sure. And so in the second part, which we'll make a totally separate video on and um, post, is we're going to start to think about listening to our body mm -hmm. and not so much reading numbers, right. you know, line right. by line. You mm -hmm. know, the numbers can give us a good indicator, right. yep. mm -hmm. but we're going to start to kind of use a different scale um, right. in thinking about it. Mm -hmm. So we'll pause here and we'll jump into that next time. Sounds good.